Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, What's Involved in Upgrading Your Microsoft Dynamics GP. We appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us today. There are a couple of housekeeping items I would like to mention before we begin the presentation. All attendees are in listen-only mode. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please either raise your hand so that we can unmute you, or you can submit them through the GoToWebinar question box. We'll be answering questions throughout the presentation, and we'll also be following up after the presentation to answer any additional questions. I'd like to introduce today's speaker. We have Jonathan Darling, who is a GP consultant here at Socius. So at this point, Jonathan, I believe we're ready to transition the presentation over to you to get started. All right, great. Thanks, Lindsay, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, we're going to be talking about upgrading Dynamics GP, which is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart as um, that is one of my specialties and also is something that I feel like most of you have probably experienced or will experience. Um, if you work in the Dynamics GP world, um, it's very hard to avoid the discussion or the experience of doing an upgrade, but it's really not as scary or as intimidating um, as you might think it is. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I joined um, Socia South, formerly Ibis Inc., in 2013, so some of you may remember me from there if you had an upgrade um, done in the last four years or so, whether it's at Socius or Ibis, there's a decent chance I was the one who did it, and hopefully you have you had a good experience with that. Um, I was a Rookie of the Year in 2014 at Ibis, and I, since the beginning, have specialized in GP upgrades and technical troubleshooting. And I'm not officially a part of the Atlanta office, the Cincinnati office, or the Columbus office. I and the sole member of Socius's Greenville, South Carolina office where I work from home in my hometown and do uh, most of my upgrades remotely. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is um, why you should choose Socius to perform um, your upgrade over um, doing it yourself or um, looking for another partner, which we of course never recommend. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, what you need to do before your upgrade to, uh, to get it ready uh, for us and also how it affects your business. So these are sort of the three main questions that many people have before the upgrade gets started. Um, sort of the first one being, you know, should we even do it? Um, should we get associates to do this? Should we see if our DBA or our IT folks can do it themselves? Um, then, of course, the next question is, okay, how do we get ready for it? And then, you know, what sort of downtime is this going to involve? Are we going to be offline for a whole week? Is this something that can happen, you know, in a couple days? And so we'll talk about all those different uh, questions that you probably have already asked yourself um, or have asked us in the past uh, so we can give you the most uh, current information on all those um, uh, burning questions. So the first question, uh, why should we choose Socius to perform our upgrade? And my answer is that we are extremely efficient, um, we do this all the time, and we really like to minimize your risk and downtime. Um, of course, you don't want any downtime for your business and you want a very low risk upgrade, and we want the same thing. We also want it to, uh, to run quickly and uh, without any, any snags. So you, you might be thinking, um, you know, could I do this upgrade myself? Is this something I really need Socius for? Uh, maybe your IT folks have upgraded SQL or upgraded your desktops in the past and you're wondering, uh, is, is it really that big of a deal to upgrade GP? And I would strongly recommend um, at least talking to us first, if not uh, engaging us to do the upgrade. There are a lot of pitfalls and a lot of ways to do it inefficiently or incorrectly. Um, but like I said, this isn't our first rodeo. Um, besides myself, there are at least four other consultants who specialize in doing upgrades here at Socius. It's the large majority of what I do and what uh, several of my colleagues do. And so with that experience, we've streamlined the process um, and streamlined our recommendations to you. So uh, if you're coming from a version of GP more than two versions old, so for example, if you're on GP 2013, which might not even seem like it was that long ago, you're now uh, two versions behind since GP 2015 and GP 2016 have come out. So um, because 
of being uh, several versions behind, there are different upgrade paths. So there are specific service packs that you have to upgrade to before you can go to the next step. There are specific versions of SQL and Windows Server not work with another. And so even though that information might be out there, it's very cumbersome to figure out um, an upgrade path if it's not something you've done before. Um, Sadly, but also maybe it's a it's a good thing that I've memorized most of these paths. So on our on our kickoff calls, just by hearing what version of GP you're on, I can usually know um, what your upgrade path is going to look like. So you know that's maybe not the best form of of, of party trivia. It is very helpful when it comes to uh, to planning your upgrade. And like I mentioned, we really want to minimize your downtime. Ideally, you will not have more than two days of downtime at any point during the GP upgrade process. And we can also pare that down to a half day or zero days if you choose to do the upgrade over an evening or a weekend. But we'll get into that later in the webinar to talk about how we can get that downtime down to almost zero um, based on what your needs are. And next we're going to talk about um, what you need to do before your upgrade. So. Hopefully you have decided that you want to engage us on it, especially if we were already your partner and do your uh, do your troubleshooting or add new features um, to your GP installation from time to time. Um, just please keep us in the loop. You know, like I said, we're here to help uh, people like me. We we do this all the time. We love having a successful upgrade, and we love working with you throughout the process. And so to begin planning for it. The first thing you need to do is sort of have a, a roundtable discussion internally and talk about when you want to go live. Um, oftentimes people don't want to be doing an upgrade during month end close or year end close or around the holidays when a lot of people are out. So just talk about some of those um, high level logistics first and figure out what's the time of the year where we're not really slammed and we have a couple weeks or a month or so that we can do this project. And, um, and also think about what other applications you use in tandem with GP, whether you're doing integrations with Scribe, whether you use CRM. Um, if you have any other applications that either bring data into or take data out of GP, maybe um, sketch those out so you make sure to bring those up with us or engage um, whoever is the owner of those applications. And um, at that point, just reach out to your associate's account manager and let them know, hey, we're thinking about an upgrade. You know, we use these pieces, or we're planning to imp to implement this software in the future. Um, how would that work with our GP upgrade? Do you guys handle that? Do we need to reach out to someone else? At that point, the account manager will reach out to me or one of the other consultants um, and give me an idea of what you have installed in your system, uh, what version everything is, and so. While you um, are talking about your internal timeline, we talk about our timeline and what's involved and sort of get the, get the wheels turning as far as our planning process for what the, uh, the effort would look like to upgrade you. And then once we've decided sort of a, a rough timeline, we will um, we'll get involved with your technical team. So the actual users of GP don't really get involved in the upgrade process until after um, we've got the test upgrade in place and they're testing it, we do rely fairly heavily on your IT folks during the beginning stages, and that's because we need to talk about what servers and what sort of workstation requirements are required for your new version of GP. So, for example, um, you will want a new SQL server with um, SQL version 2014 or 2016, and if you are uh, using GP installed on everyone's workstation individually. We also like to talk about moving to maybe a, a central uh, remote desktop server so everyone, instead of um, you know keeping track of 15 different GP installations, just have one central server that everyone can log on to GP for. That simplifies things for us as far as troubleshooting. It simplifies things for, um, for IT if someone needs to be onboarded. You don't have to go out and install all the specific GP modules and add-ons. You just give them a shortcut to the centralized uh, remote desktop server. So all those are things we talk about during the call, um, ways to make GP 
not only uh, more feature rich with the different functionality you'll get during the upgrade, but also clean up or simplify your server architecture if we can, um, whether that's consolidating to one central remote desktop server or uh, making a more powerful SQL server that can house some of your other applications. Um, we really like to talk to your IT folks and put our heads together and, uh, and, and make, some, make some deals as far as what we can do on the servers. And during that call, we also talk about the timeline with everyone. So we talk about uh, when the servers can be ready. Uh, we talk about what time you would like us to, to kick off the project and when we want to uh, shoot for, uh, for the go live and the downtime. So in that one call, we can really get a lot done. Uh, in one kickoff call, we will talk about the technical aspects as well as, as, well as the outline. So it's a great time for you as the client um, and IT to ask us anything. Um, express any fears or worries about the upgrade and um, so we can address them then or, or get back to you and make sure that this process is smooth. So um, definitely the more communication the better in the early stage of the upgrade. The more advanced warning everyone has the better we can plan and the better we can uh, fine-tune what your new GP environment will look like. And then immediately before the upgrade um, before the, the test upgrade, that is, um, there's really not too much you have to do from an end user perspective. We um, recommend that you run a detailed trial balance so you can compare it to the upgraded system, make sure that the numbers match up. Uh, we recommend that you post any single use batches um, just to make sure that those uh, updated balances will be reflected in the upgraded system as well. And then right before we, would, we begin, we like to, um, to have IT take backups of your existing environment. Um, and what I mean by backups is just the SQL Server databases that GP uses. Um, we are also more than happy to do that for you. Um, fortunately, there's very, very little risk during the test upgrade process. So the backups are more uh, to be used for the upgrade uh, rather than as a fail safe. So it, it, it's not really a... Um, uh, for a fallback, it's more of uh, so we can copy that to the new environment and begin uh, upgrading GP from those backups that we take. And we've mentioned the uh, the test upgrade process before, and so we'll talk about that uh, when we talk about how does this upgrade process impact our business. And I really feel that it's a majority positive impact. Um, there's very, very little downtime, very little risk, uh, like I mentioned, and also uh, especially if you're coming from a version like GP 10 or 2010 or 2013, you're going to be getting dozens of new features um, from things that you don't really see, uh, like performance enhancements, reports running more quickly um, due to the the new architecture of GP and also new to uh, due to uh, the new server that you're getting to um, totally new reports that you didn't have before that you might have wished you did. Um, to a, an improved interface that matches up more closely with Microsoft Office. So sometimes people are worried about how GP is going to look in the new version, but I always say that if you're comfortable using Microsoft Office, you'll be comfortable using the new version of GP. The, uh, the ribbon taskbar at the top is very similar. Um, in the later versions, you have um, better control over what printer you're using. You can choose the printer at the time of printing rather than having to set it before. So Anyone who's still on GP 2010 is probably cheering to hear that, <laughs> that printing is much easier in the later versions. But we really try to take the time to train you on those new features as well. So they don't do you any good if you aren't familiar with them or don't know how to use them. So we also really emphasize uh, user training and making sure that you get a good return on your investment from the upgrade. And so there are uh, five steps uh, or five stages to the upgrade process, and we always upgrade within those stages. We always know what stage we're in, and you know what stage you're in at all times, so that you're you're comfortable and you're familiar with where the project is. Um, we do the pre-upgrade tasks, which we've already touched on a little bit with those um, validation reports and the backups. We do a test upgrade, which is where we use your new servers, install GP on there, and upgrade on there while leaving your existing GP environment in place. So you can continue to 
use GP normally in your production environment while still um, having access to the new version to compare. Um, we also do user testing and training um, after the test upgrade is complete. And once you feel comfortable with the user testing, everything is sort of where you'd expect it to be. You can run your reports, you can post to the windows you normally post to. Um, we schedule your production upgrade, also known as Go Live. And once that's done, we transition you to your post-upgrade support, which is where we familiarize you with our, our client care team and let you know if you have an issue a week or a month down the road, um, who does that go to, who's responsible for it. So we'll go ahead and review briefly the pre-upgrade tasks. We already talked about this, but it's an important part of the upgrade timeline. So you really just have a few tasks to do, um, printing the validation reports to make sure things um, uh, match up with the new environment, uh, post your outstanding backups and, or batches, and then also taking those backups. So at any point during the upgrade, we can always go back to the status quo, especially during the production upgrade. That's, that's often a big sigh of relief for the IT folks that even when we're doing the cutover, we were never more than about five minutes away from taking you back to the old version in the, the very unlikely event that something goes wrong. Um, that's the benefit of doing the test upgrade and the benefit of having the new servers is that your existing environment always stays in place. So if we ever do have to go back to it or you ever have to refer to your old version of GP, we can always do that for you. So the test upgrade, that's where I'll say the, the majority of, of my work happens, the majority of effort is in doing the successful test upgrade. And what that means is that we, uh, we back up your production databases and we upgrade them on separate or on a separate SQL server. So you don't need to take GP down. Nothing in your production GP is affected. Nothing changes. Everything happens on those um, different servers. And at that time, we're able to figure out if there's going to be any issue, whether there's a table we need to fix so GP can upgrade. Um, whether we have to get a new version of one of your third-party products like McCormick Micker or Smart List Builder. We work through all of that in the test upgrade. Um, your integrations, you, you probably have something in Integration Manager or Scribe that you want to make sure you can get data into or out of GP. We look at all of that in the test upgrade in that separate um, sort of cordoned off sandbox so that we know it'll work in the production upgrade, but by testing it, we don't put any of your production data or processes at risk. And that's something that's, that's really important to us. It helps us. It helps you to, uh, to keep versions of GP separate. We don't want them to, to bump into each other, but we also want to duplicate. And, uh, and doing the test upgrade process allows us to duplicate those processes and duplicate your data in a really risk-free way. And user testing, this is, this is where um, your average GP user will come in. And the idea of user testing is to duplicate your routine processes and resolve questions before you go live. So you'll want to run your reports, um, maybe post some test transactions. And if you aren't familiar um, with the new features of GP or you can't find a window or a shortcut you're used to, this is where you ask us, we're, we're all yours as far as resolving any questions. If it looks like something isn't working correctly, we can fix it in a test environment. Um, and so the, the idea is that you will be familiar with GP um, 2016 before you ever migrate to it and have to use it for production. So the goal is to make Go Live sort of a, a non-event because we want you to be familiar with it. We want you to have already resolved any issues. Um, with using the new version. And so by doing that during the user testing phase, it doesn't impact production. We sort of sort of head everything off before it, it presents itself as a, a impact to your business. Something also mentioned is uh, user training. That's something that we often get requests for, um, even if people don't, uh, don't think they need it initially, um, you often want it later. So uh, an upgrade is, not a, a huge, but a, a fairly sizable investment for your business. And so you definitely want to get something for your money. We understand that. We want to, uh, to tell you about what you're getting with the new version of GP. And so while there are um, documents and you can certainly find videos or different um, 
slideshows on the web that show different features for GP, um, which are which are helpful. We provide personalized training, so you know maybe you don't run payroll in GP, so you don't want to go through a whole bunch of slides or documents talking about the new payroll features. That's fine. You know we we certainly don't want to uh, waste anyone's time. So our user training is really focused on understanding your business and talking about the new features that actually affect what you're doing. Certainly if there's something that you could be doing and you want to learn about um, that you're not taking advantage of now, we love to uh, tell you about that too. But we do our best to, to make an efficient use of your time and train you and tell you about the new features that are most relevant to what you're actually doing. And so by doing that, we'll answer your questions before they become problems. So you might have a question about um, where you run a certain report or you know, say you've heard that you can run management reporter reports from within GP in 2016. You want to know if that's actually true and can you do it. Um, and yes, it is true. And so that's something that during training we can show you how to run those reports from within GP. Um, we can show you how to um, launch your SSRS reports from within GP instead of having to go to a website. All, all sorts of things like that. You can ask your trainer and figure out how to do it before you actually go live with it so you can hit the ground not only running, but running faster um, and more efficiently. And the grand finale, um, from my perspective, is the production upgrade. This is when we talk about uh, when you actually want to go live with GP 2016. We only do this once you're comfortable with the testing and training, once any potential issues have been worked out in the test upgrade. We talk about when to do a minimally invasive transition to your new system. And so some options we have are that we can definitely do it during the week. So some people um, might want to do it on a Tuesday. So you could just have everyone log out of GP Monday afternoon, um, have us do the production upgrade on a Tuesday, and you log in on Wednesday and have the new system ready. If you are okay with a little bit of downtime, your, uh, your accounting folks can afford to be out of GP for a day or a day and a half. That's a great option. Um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very inexpensive option to do it during the week, but we also have after hours and weekend um, go lives available. So in that case, you would just have everyone log out of GP as normal on Friday. We would do the upgrade Friday night and Saturday, and you could come in Monday having no production downtime and have a new system ready. So that's, that's an option that you can talk about with your account manager um, as far as the rates on that. Um, I feel they're, they're very reasonable and certainly the benefit of doing them after hours is uh, it's hard, to, it's hard to put a number on um, as far as not having any lost productivity or um, having the peace of mind that you can just come in and have everything ready to go and you don't have to worry about it during the week. But if you do choose to do it during the week, which, which many of our clients do, there's rarely more than two work days of downtime and often only one. So really in either way, it's sort of do you want no downtime or very little downtime, so it's 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 kind of a a win-win proposition for you. And of course, we use the same servers that we were already testing on. So by doing the test upgrade, we already have GP installed. Your users already know where to log in to get to the new system, and we are just running the uh, the conversion process again. We're not having to reinstall, um, repoint any integrations. They're already there. We just put in your um, production data one more time and run through the conversion. And so the production upgrade really is um, uh, a non-event from our perspective once we've done the test upgrade. It's, it's very smooth, very easy, and, and very low risk. And once that production upgrade is done, um, we talk about uh, post-upgrade support. We'll have a, an introduction to the client care team. You'll uh, you know learn where to contact them, what you can expect as far as their response time, and um, with us doing the upgrade, we take a lot of notes and um, keep records of where everything is in the new environment. So there's sort of a, an unseen productivity boost to our client care team and to our responsiveness to you once we've done an upgrade. Because if you have a sort of a messy environment or um, an older kind of disjointed architecture for your old version of GP, once we do the upgrade and we clean everything up, it makes it easy to support you because not only do we know where all the files are, but we have new servers, a new version of GP that we're, that we're sure is, is bug-free um, 
And so it makes it very streamlined for our client care team to uh, access your environment and, and troubleshoot you. Um, it's sort of like having a mechanic work on a nice, clean new car <laughs> instead of a instead of an older car. Everything's just a little bit neater and and easy to find. And with that, that reaches the end of um, of the slides I have. But I'm sure you have some questions. And at this point, I'd, I'd be glad to open up um, the floor to any questions. Of course, if you would just like to email me directly, there's my contact information. Uh, that is not a photo of me, but it's pretty close. I also have a, a beard. But uh, at this time, uh, Lindsay, if we want to open up the uh, the question box or have anyone write into us, I'd be glad to to take any questions on the upgrade process or, or how we can help you with it. Sure. Um, there is a question. Um, you mentioned that the test upgrade will take place on a server separate from the production server. Who is responsible for providing this server for the test upgrade and making sure the environment is ready? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a great question. It's possible I, I might have misspoken. The, uh, the, the test server um, is separate of the production server for your current GP, but your test server becomes your production server for the new version. So, so that might be what our uh, what our uh, attendee meant. And as far as who's responsible for providing the server, that is something that um, you are responsible for as a client or your your IT team is. Um, there are several options for getting that new server. You can certainly buy a physical server if you like, but there's a good chance that you make use of virtual servers. So um, I often write up a recommendation document for your IT folks. So I have um, documents based on what version of GP you're going to that outline how much memory, how much hard drive space, what version of SQL, and I, I send that after the kickoff call to your IT contact so they know what server to make. Um, if you do not have an in-house IT department or uh, the prospect of creating servers is sort of intimidating, then we also can engage our cloud team and we often have folks migrate to our cloud or Azure and do an upgrade at the same time. So if you don't really feel like you guys want to buy another server or keep things in-house, we can also take care of building the server if you move to our cloud. But for most folks, um, the document that I send out with the server rec recommendations goes into the hands of, of your IT and they create uh, that new test server and they manage it just like they would manage um, your email server or your Active Directory server um, going forward. All right. Um, speaking of kind of migrating to the cloud, is how is um, migrating to the cloud handled? Yeah, a fantastic question. If we are going to migrate to the cloud, we also involve our cloud team, and they will work with me to see what your current environment is um, and what your what your needs are as far as a, a server horsepower perspective. And then your test upgrade would actually be in the cloud. So. We would give you instructions on how to access the cloud. We would do your data upgrade in the cloud. And so your go live, you would not only move to a new version of GP, but you would also um, log into the cloud, which sounds a little bit more abstract than it really is. If you've ever done a remote desktop connection to a server before, we can make that work exactly the same way, but have you head to the cloud instead of another machine on your network. So it really just adds one more um, party to our discussion. It adds our cloud team, and so they handle the building of the servers and sort of service your IT team for your GP environment. Um, but it also is very easy for me as an upgrade consultant um, to do the upgrade on a cloud server. Um, and so it, it doesn't add any time from my perspective on that. Um, and you. You, you end up with a, a very new, very fast uh, cloud server, which also works just like a, a traditional on-premise server would as far as your user experience. So uh, migrating to the cloud during an upgrade is a, is a fantastic option. Um, like I said, I really enjoy it from a technician's standpoint because it's always very fast, very easy to connect to, and it also um, can take something off your plate as far as servers to manage um, from your perspective as a client. All right. Um, another question. Um, when doing testing in the sandbox, do associates have standard test scenarios that they can provide? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, we actually have several different ones depending on what your 
um, what your business needs are. Uh, we often tailor that to what you actually do because every, since every business is different, you might not need to test something that um, someone who does payroll or, or manages you know, all of their HR and GP does, but we can certainly provide you with some suggested reports to run and some things to try out, and that's something we can talk about in the kickoff call. But um, you know, we we get this question a lot. But the the easiest way to say um, to answer it is that yes, we can certainly provide scripts. But whatever your intuition is on what you should test in GP, whatever you do regularly, that's what you should test. So in in some sense, you can sort of um, uh, build your build your scripts yourself, or or sort of do whatever comes to mind. There's really no wrong answer for what to test in GP, but we are, we are always glad to provide some guidance on that as well. All right. Um, do you know if you can upload spreadsheets for budgeting tracking in the latest version of GP? Yes. If you're talking about uploading Excel budgets in GP, yes. Um, there's a lot more import from Excel functionality in the latest version, and I know that budgets are um, one of those features. Uh, but my, I'm 99% sure the answer to that is yes. If you're talking about an Excel budget, um, I know that was available at least in version 2015, but but certainly in in uh, in the latest 2016 R2. And uh, and if you if you want a specific feature like that, um, no question like that is is too small to email um, your account manager and say, hey, we're thinking about it. Can GP do this? They are, they are experts just as much as, as I am as far as what the features are. So if you're wondering, hey, can GP do this, just ask us. We can, we can always find it out and, and tell you. All right. Um, does SQL 8 work with GP 2013? Does SQL 14 work with GP 2010? Great question. Um, SQL 2008, oh, Goodness, uh, that does not work with uh, GP 2015 or 2016. I believe it does still work with GP 2013, but um, SQL 2012 and 2014 work with both GP 2015 and 2016, but um, GP 2013 cannot use SQL 2014. Uh, that was that was kind of a word salad. <laughs> Would you mind uh, repeating that? I want to make sure I said the right. Uh, the right thing. Sure. Um, does SQL 8 work with GP 2013? Does SQL 14 work with GP 2010? Okay. Does SQL 4, uh, so I, I simply mean SQL 2014, does that work with uh, GP 2010? And the answer is no. I'm going to slide something over here. This is sort of a compatibility matrix with SQL and GP. So if you look for SQL 2014, um, it only works with GP 2013 R2, 2015, 2015 R2, and 2016. Um, so, so no, that would not work with. Um, so, yeah, no, SQL 2014 would not work with GP 2010. Um, but SQL 2008 definitely still works with uh, with GP 2013. Okay. Um, one more question. How many hours do you typically recommend for a client who is upgrading from GP 2010 in order to learn the new features? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you're coming from GP 2010, you'll be getting the new features from GP 2013, GP 2013 R2, GP 2015, GP 2015 R2, GP 2016, and GP 2016 R2, which sounds like a lot, but commonly our, our What's New sessions are anywhere from four to eight hours. Uh, we often do eight hours if you also want to learn about Management Reporter. If you're on GP 2010, there's a decent chance that you're still using FRX. So if you're not using FRX and you're already on Management Reporter, we probably do about four hours of new feature training. If you want to learn Management Reporter as well as new features, it's, it's commonly um, eight hours. All right, and last question, where can we find what's new for GP 2016? Uh, what's new for GP 2016 is a PDF that Microsoft, I believe, has put out on customer source. Um, so if you want to search customer source for that PDF, um, you should be able to find it there. Um, or you can just email us and 
say, hey, I want the what's new for GP 2016, and we can, we can send you that document. We can send you a slideshow. We can send you a video. Um, there, there's kind of three different ways to learn it, but if you just want to send, a, send an email to um, the address that will come uh, to your email after this webinar concludes, um, then, then we can send you that. So I think after, after this webinar is done, you'll get sort of a, a post-webinar follow-up, and if you haven't found the What's New document by then, just respond to that, and we can send that over to you ASAP. All righty. Well, that is all the questions. A um, couple more things before we end today. Um, our next webinar is on March 7th from 1 to 2 p.m. on GP Workflows. Um, and then all of the um, other webinars for our GP webinar series are on our website, uh, www.socius1.com. So you can check there um, and register for any of the topics that are of interest to you. So with that, um, we will let you have some time back in your day, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks, everyone.